moral of the story is we all need some. Um, who is with Percuvision, and uh, we're going to be talking a lot about. Did you want to come say hello, to Dr. Singh? All right, we're live now. So everyone, want to say hello from the RV here. Hey guys, how are you? Everyone's good. Everyone is ready for the last how many? Uh, like 120 miles of the journey. Last two hours of the journey left here. So. We've had a, a lot of great uh, events, a lot of great success, and thanks to you, uh, people like you that support um, our endeavors and, and men's health that uh, we were able to accomplish what we've been able to accomplish. Cyril, so, uh, where are you right now? I'm actually in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm in my, in my office. Nice. Long, a long day. I was hoping to get this done uh, last night, and you know, you know how that goes. I'm not on the road having lots of fun like you are. <laughs> it's hard what we do, man. It's not. It's not. A hundred, it's not. It's not. A, it's not fun all the time. So, <laughs> so so tell us. Um, I know there was a new research study that you want just to speak about. And um, as urologists, we put in a lot of Foley catheters, and so Foley catheters for our audience are essentially um, tubes that we put inside the urethra that go into the bladder and help the bladder drain its urine and they can be put in uh, because a guy can't urinate. They can be put in um, when someone is very sick and we need to monitor closely how well their kidneys are functioning and how well they're making urine. And they can also be put in after surgeries, um, surgeries where we have fixed things in the urethra or other surgeries where the patient's not going to be mobile. But one of the main problems with these catheters is infections. Is that correct, Dr. Singh? Absolutely. Um, you know, every time you pass something foreign, even if it's a sterile catheter, uh, up into the urethra, uh, through the urethra, and into the bladder, you run the risk of introducing infection. Um, and when there's difficulty in passing a catheter, the providers, the nurses or the ER doctors or uh, other uh, people in the healthcare team, they may have to make multiple attempts to get the catheter in. And uh, that exponentially increases the risk of introducing infection or in creating an injury that would break the natural lining of the urethra, the mucosa, uh, and introduce infection that way. Or uh, that can also lead to hemorrhaging or bleeding, which means the catheter has to be in longer uh, during the patient's hospital stay. And all those factors actually increase the infection. So when you say blindly, like I know right now, uh, just for the, uh, the audience, basically there's a tube that's this wide, and then we just usually use, use basically our fingers to manipulate it around the urethra and the bladder. And this can be done by your doctor, this can be done by nurses, this can be done by techs, and this can even be done by students. So you can see there's a wide range of experience that leads to these catheter placements. And, you know, fully catheter is usually uh, the first thing that we do when we're in training, and it's usually the person on the bottom of the totem pole that's doing it. So you can see why sometimes it can be um, not the most uh, pleasant experience, but... And overall, most fully catheterizations go smoothly, but when they don't go smoothly, that's when they can lead to um, long-term uh, repercussions and complications. Now, um, I, I agree that probably 80% of them go in without difficulty, and perhaps 10 to 20% or more uh, can be challenging uh, trying to get the catheter in. Jamie, I'd love to show a short little video of what I mean, what you're talking about in terms of a difficult catheterization. Yeah, go ahead. I think you can click on the left here and then. So while he's pulling that up, I'm gonna um, show you guys some of the California desert here. Oh, we'll move this thing out of the way. Move this thing out of the way. Now, now, can you see the video? Yeah, we can see it. Go ahead. I'm going to stop talking so we can see your video. So this this is a patient that came in, couldn't urinate, and needed a catheter in. Now, we knew he had had prior troubles 
having a catheter placed before, uh, and you can see I'm having trouble uh, passing the catheter in this, uh, this patient. And rather than um, keep pursuing with many other types of catheters um, and having somebody else try, uh, later on I'll show you how we used vision uh, to identify the problem and then take care of it. So when someone's, uh, when, when you have these uh, difficult catheterizations, what are some of the long-term potential complications um, if, if it's a traumatic catheterization? Absolutely. Uh, a significant number of these patients will get scarring in the urethra and narrowing of the urethra, and, and that will impact urine from flowing out of the bladder. And the other side of the coin is you'll have difficulty passing a catheter if they come in for some other medical problem, uh, typically. You know, Jamin, I think other than an IV, the most common thing we do to patients in the hospital is passing a catheter. And 20 to 25 percent of patients uh, that get in the hospital today get a catheter. Mm -hmm. That's so much of a problem in in uh, women, but it, it is a, a, a challenge uh, in men. Well, I mean, uh, you know, uh, at least once a week we get a difficult female catheterization as well. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, because women, as they get older, postmenopausal, they get atrophy um, of their vaginal area, which then leads to anatomic urethra to kind of migrate back and that makes it difficult for someone that's not experienced to kind of get the catheter in so yes mostly this is in men but I think it, it's re relevant to uh, females as well um, so one of the problems with catheters uh, is infections and I know hospitals um, as they move to a more quality based uh, reimbursement model uh, people are keeping track of infections from these catheterizations and so what, one of the, again, biggest risks of putting these catheters in is that they may stain too longer or, you know, it's a foreign body in there. So what are your thoughts on, you know, decreasing these potential risks? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, you know, catheter infections uh, are probably the only hospital-acquired condition that we have had very little impact in decreasing despite using less catheters taking them out earlier and using the best technique. And, and I think part of the reason is, as catheters are so commonly used, uh, that there's a certain proportion of the population, particularly men, that we have difficulty getting them in. And we're using only uh, sensation, feel. And we, in the medical field, we call that uh, tactile sensation. Uh, and I think if we can use vision and there is a series of escalation events that we use to get a catheter in. And ultimately, the end point of that escalation is using vision. And, and I feel that if the nurses, the person on the lowest end of the totem pole, they're doing these procedures now, why not give them vision? And that would enable them to more successfully pass the catheter on a first pass or identify some of those long-term complications that occur from previous catheterizations and then appropriately call a urologist. And so, um, you know, but it, it's, a, it's a very small space. The urethra, you know, can be a couple millimeters um, or, you know, in, in width and you know, these catheters are very small as well. So, you know, how, how can we fully visualize the urethra and in the bladder, and you know, I, I know you have a new technology that uh, uh, that you have, you know, been launching for a while now, and it's great to see that it's you know in so many different hospitals now. So, for our audience, do you mind kind of sharing, you know, what is, you know, what it, what is your vision um, for some of these things? Uh, absolutely. First, uh, maybe I can uh, just show a short animation of this technology and and how it works, and then then I can talk about that.
How am I doing on Google? <laughs> You're doing all right. This is great. So, um, as you saw, you actually saw the entire anatomy of the urethra where we actually put it in. We have the pendule urethra and then we have the bulb, bulbar urethra, the prostatic urethra, and then we end up in the bladder. And so, you saw the, um, the, the, the anatomy and how the visual catheter actually goes in through those things. And, you know, right now as a urologist, I basically, as you mentioned, do it all by tactile sensation. So, we're basically going in and then feeling for the straight areas, feeling for those curves and feeling for that prostate and boom. Once we get into the bladder, we usually feel a little bit of a uh, the resistance kind of go away, and then urine start flowing out. That's great animation, Earl. I love it. Well, I, I, I it depicts well the challenges that that occur. What what I'd like to do is um, show just one other short clip of that same patient. How direct vision identified the uh, the problem, and we're able to uh, then do the appropriate intervention. Okay. In this patient, typically, John, I mean, you know the nurses would have tried many catheters, um, and, and when you see what the problem is, they would have given up, and then they'd be calling you to uh, come in and take care of this patient. So this usually, is, usually at midnight. <laughs> right, exactly right. So this is a view uh, in the urethra with the catheter. So it's a catheter with optics. It's not a scope because you leave it behind. And there's a, a stricture, and that, that's why the catheter wouldn't uh, advance. We, were you able to see that all right? Did that come out? Yeah, yeah that came out real nice. So my vision is that um, hospitals uh, will recognize uh, this issue of difficult catheterization in the second most common procedure that we do with patients um, and utilize this technology for uh, a number of, of reasons. One is educate the nurses so that they can learn the anatomy and they'll become better at doing the routine blind catheterization. But when you run into a difficult catheterization, being able to see will allow you to solve the easy difficulties, you know, the, the obstruction from a sphincter or an enlarging prostate. Uh, on the other hand, it might also show you a problem like we saw in this patient where there was a scar tissue, one of the long-term complications, and instead of making the patient suffer through repeated point pointless attempts, a urologist would be called, and it might be one o'clock in the morning, Jamin, but uh, you'd be happy to <laughs> take care of that patient. And, and I think by doing that, we'll cut infections uh, as related to urinary catheterizations and, and also injuries and other complications. So um, as, as, as a fellow urologist, what are some of the things you tell your patients um, in the office on how to keep themselves healthy to ever avoid ever even needing a catheter or putting themselves at risk for higher infection. So, you know, diabetics are at higher risk, patients with obesity are at higher risk, um, because that basically leads to your penis kind of retracting in and making it more difficult. The Western diet is linked to enlarged prostate. So there's so many things. So, I, I, you know, what steps do you take in your office um, to share a message of prevention? You know, the patients are surprised when they ask me that question. And I tell them, I, I, when I tell them that really the diet that's good for your cardiovascular system, um, uh, the, the exercise, all those things I think are in parallel with uh, what we should do for good prostate health. Mm -hmm. So any uh, last words of wisdom, Earl? Well, first of all, um, thank you for the opportunity to, to share uh, this technology. And uh, I, I hope you guys have a great rest of the journey. And I hope there are a lot of men out there that um, are listening about all the good things that we can do to help them. And they need to take that, that stuff and see their urologist and their primary care doctor. Um, men need to focus on taking care of their health. Yes, sir. And what we will do is, um, uh, you know, even though we're live now, we will 
um, have this on our YouTube channel, and then we will also download and put up on our Facebook. So it's going to be, you know, basically a, uh, an encyclopedia or, or go-to area where people will start watching more and more and more. And um, you know, I want to thank able to join us, and 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 I want to thank the company for being an advocate for men's health by supporting uh, mental health. And you know, this, you know, this is one of those things where you know we have we think, you know cancer gets so much um, attention and so much attention, but no one thinks about some of the things that we do more common is catheterization. So I'm I'm glad that you took the initial step several years ago and created this technology. And I, every day I wake up and think, why didn't I think of this? So kudos to you. And your uh, and your company um, for, for thinking of uh, something all just um, everywhere. Well, my, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, and a safe trip for all of you guys on the road. Thanks, Earl. We'll talk to you, man. Be safe. Be well. Be healthy. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.